Hello all and welcome again to this session. The topic of discussion right now is the duodenum. I am Dr. Angit Khandelwal, MS Anatomy, your Anatomy Educator. Let's start the session. Few benefits of plus subscription you can see over here. And this is the QBank which 25,000 MCQs with well detailed explanations. Here are all the list of the tests which are conducted on a weekly basis in an academy. These are the list of free tests which are come from Wednesdays to Sundays including the test series and the YouTube test series and the marathon base and the grand test. Addition to this, for the plus students, they have extra tests on Saturdays and Sundays, so they can practice uh, for the subject wise as well as the grand test. If you want to subscribe, there are two options of plus and iconic, you can subscribe any one of them. Remember plus, you get all the benefits of an academy, iconic is addition to it, prep letter. Let's start the topic. The topic of discussion today is uh, duodenum. So <clears throat> what are the features of duodenum that we need to know while solving the MCQs? First of all, duodenum is mainly retroperitoneal and uh, a small part of it is intraperitoneal that is the initial part which is connected to the liver via the lesser momentum or you can say the hepatodotal part of the lesser momentum. So duodenum is a C-shaped mainly retroperitoneal it starts where the stomach ends and then you have the first part duodenum, the second part, the third part and the fourth part. So mainly all of them is retro apart from the small initial half of the first part that is intraperitoneal. All the other parts are retroperitoneal. Second point in duodenum that we need to know is that the four parts, first, second, third and fourth and the length of them is two inches for the first part, three inches for the second part, four inches for the third part and one inch for the fourth part. So total two plus three plus four plus one that is around ten inches. So it is total length of duodenum is roughly around 25 centimeter. Mainly it is retroperitoneal structure lies both in foregut and midgut. How? Because the second part duodenum in the middle of it, posterior middle wall, you have an opening of the major duct, major pancreatic duct that is duct of Versung. So the major duct opens over here. So proximal to it, it is a foregut and distal to it, it is a midgut. So duodenum lies in both foregut and midgut. That is one thing which we should be knowing. Foregut and midgut. Therefore, it is supplied by both celiac trunk as well as the superior mesenteric artery branches. Other structure that is closely related to duodenum is the pancreas which lies in the concavity of the duodenum. So here you have the head of the pancreas with the uncinate process over here and the pancreas will then go behind the stomach towards the spleen. That is the pancreas. So pancreas lies in the concavity of the duodenum. Okay, That is also one important thing which we need to know. So duodenum retro, so it is uh, mobile, no it is not mobile, it is sort of fixed structure and that is seen on the posterior part. Now what do we need to know in duodenum? Why do we need to know the anatomy of duodenum? The, they are not going to ask you these straight questions, though they may but yeah, chances are very less. But what they are going to ask you is what are the important structures around the duodenum? Anatomically or as a surgeon, anatomically what you need to know before you are approaching the duodenum from any, you know, from any um, Part, first part, second part, third part, fourth part. So let us see the relations of duodenum. The relation of duodenum you can see over here in this figure. Now what is this figure trying to show us? This figure is trying to show us the relation of the duodenum of which relation of duodenum we are seeing over here. The relation of duodenum are mainly over here that is the anterior relation. These are basically the anterior relations are shown over here. So where is the duodenum sir? Duodenum is right over here. Can you see the first part, the second, the third and the fourth? Right? Anterior relations. If you are touching the first part duodenum, what structure would be covering it? It is the lower end of liver over here with the gallbladder going to the second part. Fundus of gallbladder going to second part. Which part of liver would be this? It is the lower part of the left lobe particularly between the right and left. So that is around the quadrate lobe of liver. Okay. And you have also the gallbladder. Gallbladder which is approaching the first and second part duodenum. Fine. <clears throat> then in the second part, what is lying anterior to it? Because the... We know the duodenum is retro, so structures are mainly lying anterior to it. It's such a lying posterior also, but mainly anterior over here. So this is a root of transverse mesocolon. Can you see this faint line over here? Root of transverse mesocolon. Transverse mesocolon is attached over here. Therefore, we can say that the first part and the part of duodenum above this is lying in the supracolic compartment. Supracolic compartment. Okay, that we can correctly say over here. And the part of duodenum below the attachment of transmesocolon, this whole part is the infracolic compartment. So the whole duodenum is lying both in supra and infracolic compartment. Infracolic, supracolic. Above the transverse supra, below infra. 
right? There also you can see some parts of the gastrocolic omentum. What is gastrocolic omentum? Well, omentum is just a peritoneal fold between the stomach and the colon. Over so part of omentum will also be covering the duodenum, obviously. So these are the anti relations in the first part and the mainly the second part. So if there is attachment of transverse mesocolon, there will obviously be the transverse mesocolon also. Now come to the third part, very very important over here. Two vessels which cross the third part duodenum anteriorly. To the right lies a superior mesenteric vein and to the left of it lies a superior mesenteric artery. Sir, but these vessels are in uh, retro, why they are passing in front of duodenum? Because, because these vessels have to supply jejunum and ileum which are intraperitoneal. So these vessels are actually going inside the mesentery. So they pass in front of third part duodenum. What is the relevance? We all know superior mesenteric artery syndrome, the nutcracker syndrome. If this artery is coming from the abdominal aorta, if it the angle decreases, they will compress the third part duodenum leading to partial obstruction. Leading to partial obstruction. So that is the vessels over here. Second thing remember, vein is to the right, artery is to the left. If this arrangement is reversed, meaning by vein goes to the left, artery comes to the right, that is an indication of a malrotation of the midgut. Okay, so these are some of the anterior re relations of the duodenum. Now if we are seeing anterior, let us see the posterior relations also. In this figure, again, we, I hope we can see better duodenum. Why? Because we are showing the post relations. So duodenum is seen more clearly compared to this previous figure, where these anterior structures were sort of covering the duodenum. So let us move to the post relations over here. Very, very important post relations. Now, what would be lying posterior to duodenum? Because duodenum itself is retro. So posterior structures will be retro only. Duodenum is actually a secondary retroperitoneal organ. So posterior to it would be normally the primary retroperitoneal structures. Let us see what. First of all, aortas and IVCs. They are around the midline. So they are behind the third part duodenum. So remember here it gave off the superior mesenteric artery which was lying in front of the duodenum. So this is the aorta IVC lying behind. Then if you start on the first part actually, it would be better. Starting from the first part, remember this was the lesser omentum attached over here, right? And these were the right free margin of the lesser momentum. What was lying over there? The portal triad. So therefore you can see the portal vein lying behind the first part of duodenum. The CBD which is coming from above that is lying behind the first part of duodenum. We also have seen a branch of the common hepatic artery, the gastrodenal artery lying behind the first. These are very very important structures. Very very important structures. The arteries, the vein, the duct they are all lying behind the first part of duodenum. Why? Because you have duodenal ulcers, they may be lying in the posterior wall of D1. They may perforate any of these structures. So remember the duct, the portal triad structures, they mainly lie behind the D1, not the main hepatic artery, but you have branch of it, the gastrodenal artery would be lying behind. Then second part of duodenum, what lies behind it? It is the hilum of the right kidney. In front, just covered by the gallbladder, but behind lies the hilum of the right kidney. Now if you have the right kidney behind it, mainly the hilum, won't you have the hilar structures obviously? So the right renal vessels and the right ureter will be lying behind the second part of duodenum. That is very important structure which you need to know. Then come to the third part. Third part already we have seen the aorta and the IVC. Aorta and IVC will lie behind. And the branches of the aorta IVC like the gonadal arteries from coming from the aorta. Sir, how to remember the artery? Because remember, this was the transpyloric plane L1. The second part duodenum normally at L2. The third part duodenum normally lies at L3. Fourth part will slightly ascend, come back to L2. Now you know from aorta at L3 arises IMA, inferior mesenteric artery. So it will be lying over here. Then at L2, the aorta gives off the renal artery. They will go horizontally, but the gonadal artery will come down. So gonadal artery will be lying behind the third part of duodenum. Right? So these are this is the way in which we can at least understand. Then fourth part duodenum going to the left side, slightly ascending, so it again reaches somewhat close to the hilum of the left kidney and the associated structures like even the left ureter. So these are the posterior relations. You can see all the important structures lying behind. So surgically if you want to approach, then you have to keep in mind where to approach and what structures I can get because in a, in a, in a, in a patient lying on an OT table, you should know which structure because these are all retro, they are all sort of fixed structure. Okay, so these are the post relations and you have to remove them to approach duodenum anteriorly and then you have to be careful while doing any procedure over here. So these are all the relations and this is what they ask in the questions nowadays, be it NEAT or NEXT or INICT. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Thank you for your time.